Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Power Apps Notification Part 2. In the first video, I had actually done a comparison of the V1 and the V2, but in this video, I'll take an existing mobile app and we'll take it to the next level by adding this notification feature. So stick around, but first, here's my new intro video. So let's get started. Now before we go and add the enhancement, let me just show you the existing app. And here it is. As you can see, it's a timesheet app where users go ahead and click on the new timestamp and that's where they submit how much regular hours they put in and any overtime hours. And as you can see, three things are automatically populated. It goes ahead and populates who the employee is. It goes and gets the employee supervisor and the next pay date. And all of these are coming from SharePoint lists, which I'll show you in a minute. So over here, users can go and say, hey, I put in you know, 40 hours, um, any overtime. The moment you put in any of the overtime, it'll automatically go and add the sum of that. So the app is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And from an employee standpoint, you even have the option to come and say, let me show me the view calendar. In the view calendar, this is where the next payday comes from. But it also shows you all the, uh, you know, the paydays that you have across the, all the 52 um, weeks of the, of the year. So that's basically the app. What we are going to do is add an enhancement to it. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you was the, the three SharePoint lists that are involved over here. And that's important because from a supervisor standpoint. So this is the SharePoint list where all the information is stored, where you go and put in you know, your hours that you put in over time, who submitted it, their supervisor, all of this is put in the SharePoint list. Also, it is going ahead and grabbing information about those employees. Now, the reason I've done it this way is because by default, inactive directory, you might have already gone ahead and put in the employees and their manager, but this timesheet app is actually reviewed by each of the supervisors. And the supervisors might change based on what is the employee status. So therefore, we couldn't go ahead and take that from the Office 365 um, or Azure AD. I had to actually go and build a separate list for this specific scenario. And in your case, it might be different, uh, but I just kind of explain to you over here. Important to note that I've actually gone ahead and put some names the same supervisor and then so on and so forth. So there will be duplicates on the supervisor standpoint, but shouldn't be any from the employee standpoint. And then finally, uh, the list that I showed you, which was the gallery, uh, this is it. It's just coming from the SharePoint list. This is where I've gone ahead and added all the period um, of the, the dates that you go and get uh, paid and then all the weeks over here. So it's basically pretty simple, three SharePoint lists. And now that you see it, let's go and add that enhancement. So the enhancements should serve two purposes. First, it's for the supervisors. They should be able to come to the same app and they should have access to this one hidden screen where they can go and see, hey, which one of my employees have already gone and filled in the timesheet and which one of them are still due. And then obviously it's the same app where employees in their mobile phone will go in and get a notification that, hey, you haven't done your timesheet yet. They click on that button and it'll take them to the same app where they can go and finish the process. So those are the two big ones. Now, as far as the app and the employees, that's already there. They will already go ahead and get the app and we'll just add the notification piece to it. But we need to add that hidden screen now for the managers to go and get this information about their employees as far as you know who did and did not pay it. So let's, let's focus on that piece. So what I'm gonna come is I'm gonna come over here to the top left, I'm gonna add the blank one and I'm gonna rename that to manager screen. And then the manager screen, I'll go ahead and grab a few things. Like I'm gonna go, go ahead and grab this header. I can go ahead and grab you know the, some of the design piece. Do that, control C come back down to this one, do a control V. I don't need the high Daniel piece, so I'll go ahead and take that out. I will go ahead and grab my favorite, which is the Powered by Power Apps. I'll go and grab that. So now I have my header and the footer. And in this one, I'll actually go ahead and just change the title a little bit. I'll call that to review time stamps for the week. Awesome, got that. Uh, seems to have missed my home buttons icon. Let me go grab the home icon as well and we are in good shape. So at least I've got the ball rolling as far as the design piece over here. Cool, now what I do wanna do is I wanna to show the employees also, hey, this is your next payment period. So what I'll do is actually in, in this section, which I already had the calendar one, I already had that set up. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this piece and I'll grab that and I'll at least go and put that in over here in my next manager screen. So that way the managers also have a good review of what's coming on. By the way, 
if you are interested in seeing how I built this, I can I give you a little bit of overview, but if you're interested in me doing this step by step, put it in the comments below and I'll build a separate set of videos, maybe two or three of them to walk you through how I build this. So if you're interested, put it down over there in the comments area and based on what your feedback is, I might actually build it. Cool, but let's keep continuing. So now let's go ahead and now add two specific galleries. So first gallery I'm going to add is to go ahead and tell me who are all the employees of mine as me as a supervisor who are all my employees right so i'm going to go grab that first gallery and then the second gallery is i'm going to go and say hey which one of these have already done the uh timestamps so you know who have already gone ahead and put in the timestamps and then we'll also do a diff to see hey which one of them is pending so we'll, we'll do all three of them all right cool so let's go and do that because it's actually kind of fun and exciting so i'll come in now i'll go ahead and grab my gallery and in the gallery i'm going to put this on the left side and I'll actually just go ahead and grab only the title piece because that's all you're going to do. And I'll get rid of that. I, I might use it um, because I'll just come over here to the right. And I'm going to go and get me a little nicer looking arrow. So let's go find that. Ah, I like that one send. And you, you'll understand in a few minutes why we are doing that send. So I'm going to exp you know, expand that a little bit. Make it look a little nicer to the left. And I'm going to rename this gallery to my gal of the employees. All right, so that's basically how I do. Now, I'm going to go and change this name. In fact, I'm going to go and change the entire gallery. This gallery is coming from my timestamp uh, employees. So it's right there. It's going to come from this timesheet employees. Sorry, timesheet employees. So it's the timesheet employees. And then I'll go ahead and change that. I'm going to change that name to, I believe it was just called employee. And it will go and get their display name. Now, there is more than, I mean, all the employees will come in. Because over here, it's got all the employees of the entire company and their respective supervisors. Well, I need to get it filtered. So my filtering is actually going to happen based on this very simple filter formula. So let's go and add that. So I'm going to go back to my power apps. I'll actually just select this entire um, items. And here, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just comment this one out and I'll put in the filter. And in filter, it's going to be the same timesheet employees, comma, it's going to be who is the supervisor dot supervisor's email equals the current user who's logged in. If the supervisor, if the current user's email address matches the supervisor on that SharePoint list, then that's all the supervisor will see. So it's pretty simple actually. Um, just thought I'll kind of, you know, explain that to you. So now just the fact that I'm doing this because I, if you noticed, I've logged in as Daniel and uh, I'm not a supervisor, you will immediately see these things turn blank, which is correct. It is by design. All right. So we'll, we'll keep testing it as a regular user. I mean, as a manager, I have a designated match and we'll keep testing it. But for now, let's just actually do it this way and you'll kind of see what's going on. So we've gone ahead and taken care of this piece. All right. It looks pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We've gone ahead and taken care of that. Now we need to add another uh, gallery. So what I'll do is I'll do a control C and a control V because the overall design I like, so I will match it over there. Um, we are not going to use that arrow. Uh, so I'll take care of that and I'll just expand this a little bit. All right, cool. And we are moving along. Now this gallery is completely different. That gallery is just going to go ahead and tell me which of the users have, who are my uh, users, like, you know, existing uh, supervisor, which of the users, my users, have already gone ahead and submitted a timesheet. So for that, I gotta go ahead and actually get this timestamp list and also make sure that it is filtered. So let's go take care, take care of that one. So for that, I'll go back in my power apps. In my power apps, I'll have to, well, it's definitely not gonna be this one, so I'll remove that. But here's what the formula is going to be, is go ahead and get me basically the timestamp, which is all the timestamp that uh, list that I just showed, timestamp, and see if the supervisor, it's a comma by the way, if the supervisor's email dot email equals the current supervisor, that's one thing, dot email, and go ahead and only get me the employees whose timestamps matches the next day's paycheck. Because I don't wanna go and see all the employees who've gone and submitted it. I just wanna see which are the employees who have already filled that information for the next day paycheck, which is why now do you understand that it was so important to add that one column. Is when the people are submitting it, I'm going and grabbing two extra things, the next day's um, timestamp and the supervisor name, primarily 
for this filtering functionality. So hopefully that's kind of making sense now. So I'll go ahead and now get that next day. Uh, if I just go and actually do that, next day pay, perfect, equals, and I just do that little filter from the gal um, next day dot all items, comma, period, uh, end date. And I can just do that and it should go and fill it up. Now again, I'm seeing it as blank, but because I'm not a supervisor, but it is actually working. And just to make sure that this all information is actually coming from here, specifically that next day's paycheck, um, I've gone and, you know, I can go and use this one, uh, the one gallery that I copied, but it could also be basically just that one. This, this was the one which was the next day pay. So just, you know, making sure that if you in case, hey, that the next day pay, this is an underscore one over here. That's because I went and grabbed it from another one. So just, you know, thought I'll clarify that. Cool, but we are making progress. Now, one of the things that we need to do is we need to go ahead and actually just see um, which of these people have already published and which of them are still pending. But but let's actually go and do a test over here, right? So I'm gonna go first make sure that I just go and uh, publish this out. And I need to now just make sure that my manager has access to it. So I'll click on the share. And my manager is my wife. So I'll go ahead and give Rosanna access to it. I'll make her a co-owner, so she's good. All right, let me go ahead and just take a look. So here I've logged in as Rosanna. That's the app that we are building, timestamp app demo 51 seconds ago. I'll select it. First of all, she might get asked. I was expecting this to come. Go ahead and give allow, cool. And now if I go and see the view paid calendar, it is coming in. Also, it's going ahead and putting a new timestamp. That's coming in. But she doesn't have access to that screen yet. So I wonder what we did wrong. It's like, oh, well, we didn't give her access to that screen. So let's go and take care of that piece. So we'll come back now to our original app here. And in this app, we are now going to put something on the home screen. So here, let's go ahead and actually add an icon that just makes sense. So I'll go ahead and search for this one. I like the... Uh, ellipsis so I'll put this in the bottom there you can spread that out a little bit change its color to white so it's noticeable and in its on select let me go and grab its on select uh, on select it is going to navigate to that manager screen right comma comma cover um, I, I always like to put this uh, going coming to the right it's just my design style so I went and added that, but now I just want to make sure that not everybody has access to it. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to now go ahead and uh, add, while the app directly loads, I want to go and grab some information and put it in its on select. So here's, here's what I'm going to do, is when the information directly, I mean, when the app loads in the on select, I want to go and grab this information and I'll do a filter grab for that. What I'll do is once I get a filter grab, I'll just say that, hey, as long as the logged in users name shows up in the supervisor column, then go ahead and show that ellipsis over there. So that's what I'm doing is I'm not going and, you know, doing a heavy um, filter or a search to find, hey, is Rosanna or is the supervisor or manager of Daniel or, you know, just doing a verification. I said, no, I just want to see does the login user, which in this case is Rosanna, does Rosanna's name show up in any of this column? If it does, she's a supervisor, show her that ellipsis. That's what I'm doing. So let me go over here now. Let me go on into the uh, visible. Visible by default is true. I am going to now change that. Actually, I'm going to do that first in the app on start. And in the app, app on start, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put a clear collect collection for supervisor status. That's the collection that I'm doing. And I'm going to put in filter, filter, get me the timesheets employees, comma, supervisor, supervisor's email equals the current user email dot email and one more and there you go so we're done so i go right click on that click on run and we should be able to go and grab that supervisor's email now what i'll do is i'll go ahead and click on the ellipsis one and we'll go ahead and add that formula here so in the if i'm going to just do a count rows count rows count rows of the collection that we just added, supervisor status. If it is greater than zero, go ahead and do it. Show it to me. If it is not, then put in a false. So it's really a very smart and easy way to go ahead and check, is the login user a supervisor? 
And moment it happens, boom, that ellipsis will show up over there. So that's why currently I, me as I've logged in, my name doesn't show up over here in the supervisor side. Um, that's why it is showing up as blank right here. It's showing up blank over there. But if you go ahead and now take a look at Rosanna and she logs in, if I actually come in now, go ahead and you know just refresh the app there, you will see that it actually shows up the ellipsis. Now when I go and click on it, it takes me to the correct place. And we gotta do a little bit of cleaning up over there. But as you can see, Rosanna is the manager, therefore she is seeing all of this. The login user here in the studio, I am not a manager, so I don't see that. So it is working, user-based is working over here. Sweet, so let's go and actually do a little bit of cleaning up over there. We noticed that um, the, uh, the screen was a little too small. So, I mean, this uh, gallery was a little too small. So let's go and make that a little bigger. So that'll actually help. I reduce the spawn size to about 18. I don't want to get too distracted doing this, but let's at least make it a little bit presentable. All right, cool. So the information is coming in. It is getting filtered based on who's seeing it. We are accomplishing this. What I do want to do is actually clean up this gallery's name. It says gal all employees. I'm going to go ahead and change that to gal um, employees submitted. So I'll put that in employees submitted. So that way now I know that, hey, this is the one for gal employees submitted. And I mean, gal employees, and then this is gal employees submitted, because that's basically what I'll be referring back and forth on. So let's go and now start writing that for the template fill that look up inside the if. So I'll put that if there, and I'm going to do a look up, look up, gal employees submitted, employees submitted dot all items, okay? Starts with, and I'm going to do a starts with, and in the starts with, I need to go ahead and make sure that this name should show up over there. So that's how I do it. I go and grab first that name. It's called title three. This one is title three underscore. So here's how I'm gonna do it. This starts with title three dot text, comma, title three underscore one dot text. All right, did that, um, close it. If it is, then go and give me a light blue color. If it isn't, then go and give me like an orange red color. Orange red, All right? I'm going to close it and I got to close another one. Oh, I got to say if it is true, then comma, close it there. And there it works. So I just kind of missed that over there. So that's basically, it's highlighting it. It's telling me what it is and it should work. So what I want to do is I want to do a test. Let me go and save this. Let me log in back as my manager make sure that the manager sees the updated app. And well, let's just see if this coloring is working. So let's go do that. Okay, saved it, published it. Let me go grab the manager right here. I'm gonna have to do some refresh a few times. Usually three refreshes are my um, lucky charm, so to speak. I'm gonna do that. All right, so now I'm gonna click on the Elixir over here. And it doesn't seem to work. So for me to troubleshoot this, I'm gonna go back to the original app and I'm gonna pretend that I'm not a manager. Let's remove that filtering so we can troubleshoot this together, all right? So let's do that. I'll come in now for the first gallery here. I'll go ahead and do the list items. In the list items, I'll just go and take out this filtering piece here. So let me go take this one out, filter in, go like that. That way I should at least start seeing all of them show up here, perfect. In this one, I will have to do a little bit more. I'll just remove one little piece of that filtering. So watch this. I'm gonna keep this section that I wanna make sure that the date is correct because I'm only seeing the new entries, but I'll go ahead and uh, remove the filtering by the manager. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'll actually keep this one, the top one, I'll remove this one little chunk. That's all. That way at least I'll see the most up-to-date one. Oh, so there is an error right here. I think I went ahead and added a double quotes. Ah, did that. So right there, see, that error was showing up. It was a simple troubleshooting error, but we went ahead and did that. So it's working over here. Cool. Um, and this is just a normal practice. You gotta go ahead and you know put some troubleshooting and getting er errors figured, figured out and whatnot. So now that I've gone in and fixed this, let me go back to my items. And in the items, we'll go ahead and make sure that um, we add the correct formulas there, that's the one we see. Let me go and filter that one out. Same thing over here. I'll go ahead and room, um, filter the top one and we'll go and do that. And we'll go ahead and save it, publish it, and we should be able to go and see it as the supervisor now. 
because then the supervisor will only see the um, 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 uh, employees that report to her and also highlight the future ones. So I've done that. Let me come back over here and let me refresh. Like I said, third time is usually my charm. Yay, it went and worked. So let's see what's happening over here. It is telling me that, okay, these three which are highlighted in a, a lighter color, those are the ones who are already filled out their timesheet. This is the only one who doesn't show up over here. Therefore, I should be able to just click on that button and send a mail, which is the Power Apps notification. So let's get that last piece of it done, all right? Because that's like the fun part. So I'll come in now and that one, I'm gonna select over here. And on that select, we're going to go in and now do a send um, Power Apps notification, but I'm gonna use it as a flow. So let's go and first build that flow piece, which is that's the simple and easy part. So first I'll come to flow. And, and one personal thing which I do is that I try to make sure that the environment where the app is, I go ahead and put it in the flow in the same app. It's by no means necessary, but I just do that for my personal, you know, uh, um, easy to understand, easy to navigate and things like that. So that's just my personal preference over here. All right, so I'm gonna come now to the automated cloud flow. I'll select the automated cloud flow. I'll go ahead and do a skip. And then right here, I'm gonna go and say, this is the um, timestamp app notification live demo, All right? Demo, <clears throat> we're here, I go and just click on Power Apps and I'm gonna select the first one, which is Power Apps. Leave that over there as is. Next, I'll come in and I'll just search for now, send push notification. And in the send push notification, sometimes you gotta type in Power Apps, but um, it's not really picking it up. So let's just go and say Power Apps send, and that should make it a little bit fast enough. There you go, Power Apps push notification, and it is two. So we got that mobile apps. The mobile app we've got is basically a Power Apps. Now it doesn't really give you an option for Canvas versus model driven, it's just Power Apps, so that's what I'm gonna select. This is what I like about the V2, is I don't have to go and get that big grid over there. Um, I can just come in and I can just type in the app name. Our app name was Timestamp App Demo. So that's what I'm gonna do, is Timestamp App Demo. Selected that, awesome. And here, when I click on it, it'll ask, say, ask in Power Apps, which is what I wanna do, because in the app itself, I'm gonna give the manager the flexibility to select you know, individually who the notification should go through. So that individual selection feature is coming out from Power Apps itself. So I'll go and do that over here, right? Selected that, cool. Now in the message, I also wanna get the name of the person. So in the name of the person, I'm gonna just say, uh, our message is going to be hi, and then I also want the name of the person. So here, I'll go and also put in ask in Power Apps, comma, um, your, time stamp is due, All right? Cool. And then do I want the app to open? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna just go click on yes. I don't have any parameters to give, so I'm gonna leave that blank. And guess what? We are done. So I'm gonna go and click on save. And if this is the time you wanna go and mess, I mean, um, mess. If you wanna go ahead and update any of the text or the fonts, this is a good place to do that. My recommendation is do as much of that upfront because the moment you come and modify this, you're gonna to have to put some extra work in the app, which is actually detach the connection of that um, flow, add it back again, it gets a little messy. So as much as possible, try to be more you know, clean upfront over here, all right? So we are done, go ahead and close this. And actually we are pretty much done with flow altogether. I'll keep this open because we wanna see the things, you know, all the fun happening over there. And so let's go back now into the app site. So here in the on select of just that arrow there or that icon, I'm going to now go ahead and call that flow. So I click on connect actions, go to power automate and in power automate, we're going to just make sure that that flow fills up. So here there's actually a few of them. I want to make sure I'm grabbing the correct one. So when I click on it, it should tell me this flow name, which is the stamp app notification demo. And it's not, because I actually had two over there. So that's why I gotta go ahead and make sure I delete that. And more than likely it's this bottom one over here now. And this is just a good practice too, because you might just have those flows which are very similar in name, and you just wanna make sure that you get the correct one. And that's basically, I almost made that mistake, but we went and verified it. So that's the one, notification demo. And after that, it seems pretty simple and straightforward that I've got to go ahead and now grab the recipient item, which is basically that email address. 
I should have made it a little bit more clear in the naming inside the flow, but I know what it is and you do that as well. So this one is going to be this item <clears throat> dot employee dot email. And the next one is going to be very similar. It's this item dot employee dot display name. And there we go. We are actually done over here. So let me go and now just save it. Publish it and do a test. So I'll just get my phone set up and we'll actually do a test on that. All right, so I went and got everything situated over here. On the right side is the app that the manager sees. And on the left side, that is the notification that the user who hasn't filled in the timesheet will see. All right, so this is the phone. Now let's go, me as a manager, I go in and I am the manager, so I actually see the ellipses and I say, oh, yep, of the employees who filled, Daniel's the only one that hasn't filled his app, um, his timesheet yet. So let me just go and send uh, Daniel a little notification. So I click on that and the moment I do that, the flow kicks off and then any second, voila, right over here, it's telling me, hey, I got a timestamp that's due. So when I click on it, it directly goes ahead and opens the time uh, a sheet app and takes me inside it. it. Opened up Power Apps, it went into the timesheet. So in the app over there. So now I'm just gonna go do that. I'm gonna say, yep, I gotta go, I, I missed it. Let me just go get my uh, timesheet submitted. So I say, yep, for that week I put in 40 hours, but I also went and put in five uh, additional times. As you can see, it automatically populated. Uh, my name already populated, my supervisor's name automatically populated, next payday is all done. So all I have to do is now click on the save. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And it goes ahead and saves it. Now, if I were to the manager who actually came in, and if I were to go, go in and check over here, if I refresh it, which by when the app opens, it automatically refreshes. So if I come in here, as you can see, that all of them are finished. Yay, all of the Rosannas, all of the employees over there have gone and finished the timesheet. And this is awesome because all of this could be done directly from a phone using a combination of Power Apps and Power Automate. Wasn't that awesome? Now a manager or supervisor in the convenience of a phone can directly go and see, hey, which of the employees has not submitted the timesheet and then through a click of a button in the app can send a very specific notification only to that employee. So no longer does the manager have to sit in a computer and say to all the employees or try to find out, oh, which one of them did fill or do any comparison. No, the app did all the comparison and the notification directly goes through, full, through Flow. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. And as always, keep using Power Automate. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.